Today I'm going to be reviewing the Whole Cake Island Dark so far. We are currently on One Piece Chapter 869. Alright, let's talk about this. This is a very good arc, alright? It's very good, but it's not the best arc in One Piece, and I'll explain why later. But first of all, let's talk about what makes this arc great. First of all, the fact that we're being introduced to a Yonko, it doesn't matter what I'm going to talk about later on. The sheer fact that we're being introduced to a Yonko, and the Yonko are finally relevant, gives this arc a boost, in my opinion. Because no matter what you think of Big Mom, we've been waiting for this for a long time. And her devil fruit is pretty damn awesome and overpowered. I like she can rip the souls out of people and put them in an inanimate object. That is awesome. Great concept there. So it makes the Whole Cake Island the best. One of the best arts in my opinion is two things. One, without Zoro and Sanji there for a majority of the arc in the beginning, we got to see Nami, and even now still, we get to see Nami, Chopper, and Brook shine. Something we normally don't see. How often, can you please tell me, how often you get to see Luffy and Nami? Have a two-on-one fight against an opponent that's stronger than Luffy? Now, we've seen Luffy and Nami do one or two combo attacks throughout the series, and I have to think Oda could do more with that. I think about that and Nami creates like a thunderstorm, and Luffy puts his giant pistol in it, like he did against the uh, Shiki in Strong World, and he does like a gun gum no Thor pistol or something. You can you could do a lot with Luffy and Nami as characters in a tag team. But the point is that we rarely see that. So seeing them came up to be Cracker and seeing a fight where it was like Luffy was lose if not for Nami, it's great. I love that. There's also the fact that a uh, Brook Brook fought Big Mom. Now granted he didn't fight her directly, but Brook Stood in the presence of Big Mom, getting the road portalist and all his badass moments there. That was great. Then of course there's Sanji's fight with Luffy, which since I caught up to One Piece in like 2013, around the Sabo reveal, since then, I, I love this. This is great. This is some of the greatest writing I've seen. Like, this made me tear. I don't tear up. I it took the last time I teared up when watching a piece of anime or reading a manga was uh, the Naruto and Sasuke fight. I teared up a little bit during that. And uh, this because, you know, I've been watching Naruto even longer than One Piece and it was finally ending. So that just the fact that I knew at that moment it was ending was a big deal for me. But at the end, the time from Naruto and Sasuke fight, the last time I teared up in One Piece was Luffy and Sanji. I mean, Big Mom backstory is sad. It would probably help if I had read it in order, but I'll get to that later. But, uh, no, but what ha the thing is about Big Mom, about uh, Luffy versus Sanji, is that it, it was so well done, I cried. Like, I cried a teeny bit during that. That was a really, really good fight. Probably, you know, no, I don't think about that, but that's part of the whole arc, in my opinion. That will be a staple point of this arc for me. Whenever I think of each arc, I think of certain things. I think of Roka, I think Gear 4. When I think, uh... Punk Hazard, I think Grizzly Magma. I, when I think Drek Roach of uh, Fifth Man Island, I think that uh, that thing when Luffy arrives at the plaza. Stuff, stuff like that. This will be that moment for me. But, very good arc. Really enjoyed it. A very good part of the arc, I mean. And uh, I feel like this arc's biggest weakness, at least for me, was the middle of it. I'm actually become, I, I lost a lot of investment. In the middle of it. I really did. And I'm starting to get that investment back. But what happened was, was there was that memory when Luffy was being held captive. For a couple of weeks there, the pace thing kind of stopped. Like, it was kind of like we were, we were, we were progressing very slowly. And it's one of the things I've always said Oda had problems with. When it had the pace thing, like right now, it's like, Awesome, 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 awesome. I mean, it's like with Sanji, it was like, how many chapters did it take for from when Sanji left for Sanji to, like, you know, we, Sanji, like, decided to escape. 
It took him like three chapters to actually escape, and he met up. Then it took him like a chapter to meet up with Luffy. And then we ended on a cliffhanger. It really trolled us a lot there. And it, it kind of, I got kind of annoyed because I, I wanted this to go somewhere. Like, I felt like we were just progressing a little. We progressed a little too slowly around that area for me. I like my theory to be point, point, point. I don't want to wait time. And I get it. One thing is about the journey. And I agree with that. But I mean, like, we wish, like, you know, we don't need, like, when Lucy was in the cave, that was good. But it slowly but surely got kind of like, okay, this is getting kind of annoying. Like, can we move on, please? You know, can we, can we, can we, can we spend too much time in the castle? Like, trying to escape the castle. I feel like that's due to been maybe, I feel like you could have condensed a lot of that into, like, five chapters, like, three or four chapters. That was, like, seven, eight chapters, from what I remember. But it was, it was a lot of chapters. And I kind of fell out of it. But once the straw, and then the, and then the plan, and then there was a, and then, of course, one, and then, of course, there was all the planning, which I didn't get involved until the planning ended. That's when I got reinvested. But that period from around when Luffy and Nami got captured, but when I started falling off, and then after when they arrived at the wedding, with, in between then, I really became um, uninvested. So, yeah. So that's one thing I want to talk about. And uh, what else did I have a problem with in this arc? Not much time for Big Mom's design. Okay, Big Mom is really powerful. But when I think Shanks and Luffy, I can see them having an epic awesome battle. When I think Kaido and Luffy, I can think that have see them having an epic awesome battle. When I think uh Oh, sorry about that. I'm not gonna edit this out, by the way, this is unedited. This is unedited, by the way. No, no, when I think of uh, Kaido and Luffy, I can see an epic battle. I think of Blackbeard and Luffy, I can see an epic battle. But when I think of Big Mom and Luffy, I'm like, Big Mom, like, I, I cannot see, you know, like, an epic fist fight between, I can see a battle of Devil Fruit, like a hockey battle, but I, I can't see, like, a Rob Luffy versus Luffy kind of fight, or Doflamingo versus Luffy kind of, like, brawl. With like I'm in hockey between them, and Big Mom's so damn fat. <coughs> Please note that Big Mom could get smaller later on, but I mean, just, I'm intimidated by Big Mom. But the problem is, is that I just I just I had trouble taking her seriously. It's just, I'm not there with Oda. I have the same kind of problem with kind of with Genko Moria. When did it? You wear Meg, your side character, and and what? Well, the only time I have a problem with villains looking like they like Big Mom and Gecko Moria is when your main antagonist of an arc. And Kaido, and Kaido, fine. Can you? Kaido looks badass. But when you look at characters like Big Mom, I just kind of like a fat lady. I I, I no. Like, Big Mom's a great villain, don't get me wrong. She eats people when they're alive. It is some... They did their thing that I've only ever seen characters do in Attack on Titan. And even then, the people doing the eating aren't... Like, they had no brains, really. At least from what I know. Don't spoil Attack on Titan in the comments, please. And I think you know what, go ahead. I don't care. I'm not watching the season 2 anime anyway. <laughs> no, but, uh... Attack on Titan, not Attack on Titan, uh, One Piece, this arc, it has a lot of flaws in, in the regard of the pacing isn't the greatest. And I, I don't, Big Mom, when I, I, she doesn't intimidate me with a look. She did it first, because at first the idea of a Yoko intimidated me. But then I kind of realized, Big Mom could kill them all if she wanted to. But I get more heights for battle than power. So like, and I can't see Luffy vs. Big Mom being the coolest fight of all time. I just can't. But maybe that is just my opinion. Now, one last little thing I want. This is just me rambling about the arc. 
for like 10, 15 minutes. So, is it not gonna be a, is it like a critical video? This is just me giving my opinion on the arc so far. So, uh, what else is your opinion about the arc so far? I feel like besides the painting in the middle, it's a really good arc. I don't agree with the statement that people are saying it's the best arc. I believe it's really good, and I, but I'm putting my money on Wano to be the best arc in One Piece. I hope it is, because as a fan user said in the video, which I will link down below if I remember, and if I don't, remind me in the comments. But as fan user said, fan user double zero said, this arc needs to be the best arc in One Piece. The whole King Island arc, or, or Wano, they need to be the best. Because a lot of people have found the new world to be a little bit of a letdown. By one piece of standard. A lot of people think it would be a better pre-time skip. What I do think it was, because I will also say this again. I feel like what I'm missing, and I've been saying it for a while from this arc, is what I love about one piece. And what I think one piece is that is best is when the crew is together. And that's why though it's my, probably my favorite arc. We get a ton of information, a ton of story progression, but minus Sanji, the entire crew, since the first time since Punk Hazard is together. Thank you! Like, the crew is about, it's becoming much less focused on the whole entire crew, and more focused on groups than them, but mainly only focusing on Luffy and the members of the crew that are with him at that time. I'm really hoping to change it in Wano. I really hope we order to take half the crew away again. Because I, the main reason that I started loving One Piece, partly because of the story, partly because of all the other stuff, but mainly because I really liked that straw hat dynamic. And I feel like what hurts arc like this and Jack Rosa for me is that the crew is never together anymore. Like, we never, when was the last time we got a good Zoro versus Sanji banter? Film gold? Like, I remember, I remember when Adventure in Neverlandia, or whatever we call it, came out, like, last summer, or the summer before, last summer. I remember what people were saying about that arc. You know what people were saying about it? You want to know what people were saying about it. Then it was one of the best arcs in one, then it was one of the best movie, because they grab it to the crew together again. Like, we only really see the crew together in movies and anime specials now. And that kind of makes me kind of sad, because that was one of the things I loved about this series. And like, when was the last time we actually saw all nine Straw Hats together? Punk Hazard. We haven't seen that in Punk Hazard. Like, no matter how, it just, that's what I love about One Piece. It's the Straw Hat Pirates. And I really hope Oda starts doing it together again. We see it in Pun. We last, the last time we saw them all together in the manga, the size of cover page, or col color spread, or cover page, went punk hazard. And that, for me, takes away from it. It really does. Because there's nothing I enjoy more than a good Zoro and Sanji fight. Okay? Like, even the Zoro and Sanji debate is starting to disappear. And you notice it. Because they never, they're not competing anymore. Like, that debate was much more heavy when we were getting constant bickering between them. Now it's there, but like it's not really talked about anymore. Like people are like, you don't really see people talk about it as much anymore because they never fight. Like, yes, it's a thing, but it's not a very common thing. So that's about all I have to say on the matter. I mean, it's just, yeah, I think it's a really good arc. Definitely next, next to the. If I had to rank the new world arc, I'm not going to do it all, but I would rank this at number two. This is the second best arc in the new world, next to though, which is borderline perfect in my opinion. It had a couple really good fights. <coughs> it had a couple good fights, and it had Luffy battle with, uh, what's his name? And it had, it had, it had, it had Luffy in his fight, but it had a lot of good plot progression. Lots of great char and a lot of great character moments. And I've said it time and time again. I don't re read One Piece for fighting. I don't. I read it for the story and for the character. That's why I like One Piece. 
story and character than the Straw Hat dynamic. Alright? Though, though for me, Mobu McCrew was almost completely together. Which I was very pissed when they split up. I was kind of disappointed. But, uh, I think I talked about that. How, like, how I was disappointed they all didn't go at the time. But at that time, I kind of got it. Like, it, it made sense from a narrative standpoint. It doesn't mean I need to like it. But, uh, yeah. Those are my thoughts on the whole Cake Island arc. Tell me your thoughts on the arc that's are in the comment section down below. Uh, yeah. Remind, make sure I remember to, uh, remind me in the comments if I don't like Stan user video. But even if you don't, check out Stan user double zero. Great content, that man. Double up, guys. Have a great day.